I love how you have both of the titles there. <laughs> you got to do that promoing. <laughs> got to do that promoing. Yeah. Um, Let me just. They're both. My... They're so similar in the message that they're trying to send. I actually uploaded a video this morning about becoming your own home. And to me, that's such an important part of learning to trust yourself is to see yourself as your own home. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I have always, I mean, when I wrote Welcome Home, one of the messages that I just, I was like, if, if I want people to walk away with anything, this is the thing is you can't build a home within if you don't know who you are because you need to know the person who you're coming home to. You need to know the person who you're spending time with. You need to know the person, not just know as in who are you and what's your name and where were you born, but what are your triggers? What are your patterns of behavior? What have you in the past fallen for or notice that this is the way I behave when something happens in my life so to be able to to write trust your heart lead your journey to self-discovery from within really allowed me to just focus on that part of like truly getting to know yourself so that you could say I trust this person I trust myself because I know myself if I don't know myself I don't know who I'm trusting yeah that self-awareness is so key right Mm -hmm. yeah and I did like you said I saw a lot of similarities between these two books and I feel like they go together really well so uh let's get into yes Mm -hmm. um so I don't know if if you want to do a a quick introduction just like a couple sentences of who you are, uh, what your background is, and then uh, yeah. I have a bunch of questions. We could go for hours. Uh, I won't force you to, but we could. I have enough questions for it. So I'd love to uh, just get going with it. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who don't know, I was just reading some of the comments, but uh, my name is Nejwa Zabian. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I'm a poet. I'm a teacher by trade, but now I teach in the bigger classroom of the world. Uh, I would say my biggest struggle since I was very young was feeling like I didn't belong, like I wasn't a priority. I like I didn't deserve to be loved the way that I sought everybody around me being loved and being just given so much care and attention. And I internalized that to mean that something about me meant that I deserved that. Um, that I deserved to be excluded and that I deserved to just, you know, be on the margins of life. So, as you know, we grow into adults from the children that we are. It's not like you hit a certain age and you hit a reset button and you're like, now I know everything there is to know about life. So even into my adulthood, I carried that belief that I didn't deserve what I saw everyone around me get. Um, And what I needed the most was somebody to truly see me and to value me and make me feel like I was worthy of love. And so when I started writing in, so I self-published my first book, Mind Platter, who many people will know, any person who knows me probably knows Mind Platter. That was like the first time in my life that I put out my feelings, my thoughts, like as raw as they were, they were journal entries. And I all of a sudden realized that I'm not the only one who feels and thinks this way. Like this whole Mm -hmm. time I'm sitting here thinking something's wrong with me for thinking and feeling this way. And then when I put my writings out there, people from all over the world were like, thank you for putting into words what I've been trying to say for so long. So That's what pushed me to continue to write even more. Um, It not just the the freedom and the liberty that I felt uh, when I put my writings out there, because it's it's a very vulnerable thing to do to say, this is who I am. And this is how I think and feel. And there's a level of indifference to what people think about you, that you gain once you actually put yourself out there. 
-hmm. Like we always have this fear of like, what are people going to think of me? And I remember at the time, many of the people around me were saying things like, those are private things. Don't put them out there. Like, don't post writings on social media that show your heart and show the way you think and the things that you struggle with or that show any sign of vulnerability. But once I was able to just focus more on the beauty of doing something like that and then seeing the number of people who were like, I feel the same way, it there's there was no turning back for me. I just... I got I gave that internal validation to myself by putting the writings out there and then I got also external validation from the people who loved my writings. So a few years later and a few books later um I started off writing, you know, short poetry and prose and the reflections that were in mind platter. One thing that I and those around me noticed is that even though some of these writings were super short, um, there was always like, they would make you stop and think and there was a big impact behind them. So we were like, why not write something in longer format, something like a self-development book, because that's really what your writings are about. That's what everybody said. So Welcome Home was really the first time that I put something out in that had chapters, that had longer stories, longer reflections, practical strategies. And it was such a huge success that, you know, to this day, it's still doing so well. There's so many people from all over the world who are reaching out because of it. And then Trust Your Heart also came afterwards as a way for me to guide any person who's having a difficulty truly and genuinely trusting themselves after being heartbroken or after having their trust broken by someone like you know how do I get to a point where I'm able to trust other people again and to me the answer begins with trusting yourself because no amount of trust that you put in other people is going to compensate for the amount of trust that you need to put into yourself because when someone else breaks your trust or breaks your heart, who needs to pick up the pieces? You do. Mm -hmm. What we usually do is we rely on the person who broke us in some way to heal us or to pick up those pieces. Or we rely on another person to come in and, and really prove to us that they deserve our love, that they deserve for us to take another chance, that they deserve to get our trust. But as long as our focus is on the external world, we're always going to be a victim to that or a hero of that. But it's not for ourselves. It's in other people's eyes. So trust your heart to me, which if anybody's wondering, you can get it on script. It's the second, the first link in my bio. Um, and you can get a 60 day free trial if you would like to read it or listen to it in my voice. I narrated it. So in Trust Your Heart, I really wanted to get any person who reads it or listens to it to get to a point by the end where they feel like, okay, I am ready to take this journey. And I know the exact steps because I laid it out in steps. I know the exact steps to get to a place where I can say, I trust myself. I know for sure that there is no way to guarantee that someone else isn't going to break my heart. There is no way to guarantee that someone else isn't going to break my trust. The only guarantee I have is that I can tell myself we can get through this. Yeah. And it's a, a perfect encapsulation of something we talk about here constantly, this idea that I discovered from the Stoics, this idea of externals and internals. Right. The externals are anything that happens to you, like, you know, someone breaking up with you, cheating, you know, what the weather is, whether you mm -hmm. get a job or not. And, uh, you know, the second part of what you're talking about is the internals, you know, in those situations, what do I do? What, how do I go in inwardly and build myself yeah. up so it's not affected by the externals or it, the effect is minimized as much as possible? Mm -hmm. So. I love that. And I want to get, uh, we're going to get much deeper into Trust Your Heart because there was so much goodness in it. But before, I like that you started talking about how you were feeling when you were young. Because I watched mm -hmm. um, 
an interview you did with Ed, Ed Millet, I think. I don't know how to pronounce his yes. last name, but Ed, Ed Millet. Ed Millet, yes. Millet. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, you said in that that you started writing at age 13 because you didn't mm -hmm. feel like you belonged. You said, there was an amazing line, you said, I felt like a zero, a nobody, invisible. And then in mm -hmm. Trust Your Heart, you wrote that you still have these vivid memories of being a child and needing to repeat things multiple times before you were yes. even looked at. So mm -hmm. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that, because for me, my <laughs> most inspiring thing is the origin stories. So I want to know, how did yeah. you deal with that all inside your head? How did you how did you think about what was going on? And then how were you able to overcome and accomplish all the amazing things you've already accomplished? It's so interesting that you asked me about that one moment in particular where I said I have vivid memories of needing to repeat myself more than once before I was looked at because as I was in the studio recording the audiobook for Trust Your Heart that was the part that I had to repeat at least five or six times because of how emotional mm -hmm. I got every time I would say it I would start reading it and I would immediately start tearing up and just like start shaking my head because of how painful it was to think of those memories. And it's not to say that I'm not healed. I mean, I don't think you ever truly get to a point where you're like, I'm fully healed and that's it. Because to say I'm fully healed, I think probably means that I'm not fully healed. <laughs> But I, I believe that I've done the work of detaching what it means about me that I went through something like that. I've done the work where when I am triggered or when I do go through a moment where I'm reminded of those moments, I can sit with myself with all the compassion that I need and walk myself through it. And that's what I mean by saying, I believe I'm fully healed from that is that now I have the tools that when those memories come up, I am able to soothe myself through it, walk myself through it, And at any moment where I get a hint of like, well, you must have deserved it or wow, like that really hurts. And how could you get through this? You know, we all get these, we get too stuck on pains of the past. And it's like our ego truly wants us to identify mm -hmm. with those memories. But I'm at a point where I, I truly have developed the internal tools to be able to see a memory like that and just remind myself that wow like that was really bad and you know I, I wish that we could go back to that moment and be able to speak to little you with mm -hmm. the compassion that you have for yourself right now and so it's a lot easier to get through those moments but thinking back to them um and having and so in welcome home I discuss the why can't I have that story? So I see a lot of people here are saying, I have Welcome Home, I have the audiobook. So I want to make that connection. And Trust Your Heart, I talked about, you know, repeating myself more than once before I got someone's attention. And what that taught me as a child was, if you speak loudly enough, you will be heard. If you mm. make enough of a of an effort to get someone to hear you, then maybe they will hear you. If you try to convince someone of why you deserve to be heard or looked at, then maybe they will. So I learned from a young age that I needed to earn mm. being heard and being seen, that, that I am what I do. So my worth is based on how hard I try, not based on who I am. Mm -hmm. So so throughout my adult years, and this still seeps into my present, it really does because, you know, our bodies remember patterns that maybe mm -hmm. our mind has already resolved or has like the trick to it. Like, like really, Najwa, you don't have to work so hard to be heard or to be seen. But my body remembers certain patterns that, I have to catch myself sometimes and say, oops, we're falling into that people pleasing behavior again. Mm -hmm. um, so it, that memories like that truly made me a walking people pleaser, a walking like, what can I do 
to get your attention? What can I do? But it, but it wasn't like, what can I do to get your attention in an exaggerated kind of way? What can I do to get the basic human needs mm-hmm. of just you treating me like a human? Right? So I was like overly doing to be treated with the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. And that's because of memories like that and my childhood experiences like that because that's truly what shapes for us what I'm I'm reading a question here that's truly what shapes for us how we think like I get people sometimes say things like well, you're just too stuck on things that happened way too long ago like everybody's gone through stuff in their childhood yeah I do agree everybody's gone through stuff in their childhood but if you don't resolve it, like, again, you don't get to a certain age where a switch happens, and you all of a sudden forget everything you learned from your mm-hmm. childhood, or you are a growing, growing being. So those little moments in your childhood become they grow with you, mm-hmm. they shape for you how you see the world and how you see yourself. So if you don't do the work to detangle to like take yourself out of like this means something about me the fact that this happened to me means something about me if you don't do that detachment work then it continues to rule you consciously or subconsciously somebody asked me here how do you know that Um, are you okay with me answering a question yes of course how do you know it's a trigger so obviously for each one of us our triggers are very um specific to our experiences for me I know I'm triggered one of my signs is I start getting shortness of breath and Mm -hmm. it reminds me of moments in the past when I was really anxious really stressed out and feeling exactly the same way and so that shortness of breath it's like my body's telling me uh, we're, we're we're being reminded of something that happened in the past, like we're being put in a certain kind of danger that we felt in the past or anything. If you were to look at your present moment as I actually have the guide printed here. So if you were to look at the present moment as this flat line, like this is your, um, when you are fully seen and fully heard, this is the peace that you feel when you can be fully yourself, when you're not triggered, where you're just existing in your authenticity. A trigger is anything that's going to bring you down or up like way too much or a little bit from that state of, I can fully be myself. I don't need to work hard to please someone. I don't need to anything that is giving you the urge to either do something differently or say something differently or snap back into overly negative or overly positive um, ways of thinking and feeling. To me, that symbolizes you are being triggered by something. Um, But you'll know it, you can tell when you are being triggered because it, almost feels like you are stepping outside of yourself. So this flat line that I was talking about, the peace, the authenticity that I don't have to do to deserve this, you know, to exist as I am, anything that's going to, so imagine this as a solid line and anything that goes down or up, imagine them as dotted lines. Like, Those are truly transient states that you're going to go through. You're not going to stay there all the time. It's going to go up and down, up and down. But truly what you're aiming for at the end of the day is to be fully yourself. So anytime that you feel like you've left yourself a little bit, whether it's for something that feels overly great. And I know this sounds a little bit um, abstract. So I'll give you an example. Um. Say you're in a relationship with someone, and I know many people can relate to this. And for example, there is complete lack of affection. And you have one moment with that person where they give you a big hug out of the blue. 
And mm -hmm. that feels so great. Like that could symbolize the that mm -hmm. upwards positive dotted line that I'm talking about. And when you really think about it afterwards, should it really feel that great? Or right. did it trigger for you that, you know, older beliefs about maybe I don't deserve that kind of love. So when I get a little tiny bit of it, I'm going to just be so euphorically happy. To me, that's also being triggered mm. when you're you're allowing something that external to you to affect you that much. Yeah. I hope that yeah. answers your question. <clears throat> Um, I wanted uh, to read a little piece from Welcome Home because sure. I think it uh, does. I usually am not a big affirmation person, uh, especially <laughs> in books. I feel like yeah. they're very they're often very disconnected, like just like a string of platitudes. But yours so resonated so deeply. It felt like almost like a little short story. So I wanted to read uh -huh. that and then maybe yes. uh, you, you give your thoughts on it and where they sure. came from and why it's so important. Mm hmm. So I'll read here. I am the only person in charge of loving myself. This is for anybody who has the book. This is page 81. Uh, I'm the only person in charge of loving myself. I will see evidence of love throughout my day. I am my number one priority. I deserve my own love. Loving myself means being at home with myself. My whole power is inside of me. Mm -hmm. Today, I will answer my own call for love. I understand that I might have moments of falling back into old habits rooted in self-hate or unworthiness, but I promise myself to practice self-love any moment I become aware of my own negative self-talk. And that just mm -hmm. feels like like that that's, uh, you know, self-healing uh, simplified right there. So I'd love to know where that came from and why you think it's such an important, uh, you know, collection of ideas to instill in yes. yourself. This was in the self-love chapter, right? The affirmations that you just read? Um, I believe. So. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm positive it's in the self-love chapter. So to me, I began with self-love after talking about building a strong foundation of self-acceptance and self-awareness. To me, self-love was so important to begin with because love is one of the first things that we think I need to get it from the outside, you know, sorry, my phone just <laughs> almost fell over. Love is one of the first things that I'm going to go to another person for because it feels so good to receive it from someone. It feels good to be chosen, especially when you never felt chosen throughout your life. It feels good to be given attention when you were made to believe that you don't deserve attention. It feels good to just feel that somebody else sees in you what you wish everybody saw in you. And one of the saddest realizations I had was that I was expecting people to see things within me that I myself didn't see. And let me clarify, it's not that I didn't know my worth. It's not that I didn't know that I was a good person. I didn't treat myself like I knew. Mm -hmm. And that was such a powerful moment and sad moment for me because I look at love as treatment. Love is through action. It's not just through words. And so the affirmations that you normally read where you're like, I love myself. I this, I this. It's like, you can say that to yourself all you want, but if mm -hmm. you're not truly putting it into action, those are just words. So in Welcome Home, I just like I do in Trust Your Heart, I pose the question, if you love someone, how do you show them that love? And people will list what they do for that person. And then I say, well, if you love yourself, how do you show yourself that love? And that's when like that big revelation happens. Like, oh, I just tell myself that I love myself. But when it comes to action, I put myself last. I always think that being a good person means putting everybody else ahead of me because like subconsciously, the reason we do that is we think that if we give enough, then we are going to be given back. But mm -hmm. we have to remember that we are our number one priority, not everybody else. And then us, if we fail to give ourselves 
then we can't truly say that we've actualized self-love. Like I'll never tell a person you're lying when you say you love yourself. I think any amount of being able to say I love myself is just beautiful. And even if you don't, like right now, as people are watching, if you don't feel like you are showing yourself love in action, but you can still say I love myself, that's beautiful. That's progress. But let's move towards actually showing that love to ourselves. And so those affirmations came from that place of really wanting the person who's reading these affirmations to transform that these words, I love myself, from just words to action. Same, and, and there's such a power in affirmations and also in questioning ourselves. There's, as you were reading those affirmations, I remembered a part in Trust Your Heart that I wrote that was just super powerful and it's about giving yourself closure after somebody has broken your heart or broken your trust and I gave a list of questions um, and I can read a few of these but um, for me the goal has always been with these affirmations and with these questions to go a lot deeper than the surface of of just logic I want the emotion part to be part of it. I want the person reading this to have an inner revolution, to have an inner, like, oh my God, like how, how am I still continuing this way when there's so much that I am not okay with? So if you're okay with it, I'm going to read some of yes, these questions. Of course. So in Trust Your Heart, this would be in chapter, for anybody who would who's interested it's chapter three learn to rebuild yourself after someone else broke you so here i said giving yourself closure after heartbreak is part of the discovery process so that you can learn to trust within before moving forward being able to narrate the closure yourself increases your validation of your story and truth which leads to deeper self-conviction and self-trust if this is still a struggle Ask yourself the following questions instead of asking the person who hurt you for closure. Do I want to be with someone who is inconsistent in their love for me, in their respect for me, and in their prioritization of me? Do I want to be with someone who weaponizes my pain against me? Do I want to be with someone who treats their friends, colleagues, or anyone out in public better than me? Do I want to be with someone who breaks their promises? Do I want to be with someone who says words that don't match their actions? Do I want to be with someone who takes advantage of me in any kind of way? Do I want to be with someone who takes every attempt at communication on my part as an invitation to a fight, especially after I've expressed over and over that I do not want to fight? Do I want to be with someone who has character traits that fundamentally changed? Do I want to be with someone who showed me that they were a certain way as a person and then after things got real, changed drastically to the point where I questioned whether I ever really knew them? Do I want to be with someone who I don't feel safe and secure with as a direct result of their actions? Do I want to be with someone who consistently minimizes my feelings and undermines my struggles? Do I want to be with someone who actively doesn't want to celebrate me or my accomplishments? Do I want to be with someone who treats me in a way that I wouldn't accept for someone I love? Do mm -hmm. I want to be with someone who isn't sure about me? Do I want to be with someone who gives more attention to other people of the same gender as mine than they do to me? Do I want to be with someone who doesn't see me, hear me, and sit with me in a present way? Once you go through all these questions and answer each one with no, you can be sure that knowing the reason why any of those things happened isn't a requirement for you not to be okay with them. So this was one of the most like powerful messages that I wanted people to walk away with after reading Trust Your Heart is looking for why someone behaved a certain way we do that as a way to try to understand, like, well, maybe if I know why they did what they did, I can 
then decide if if I have the right to be hurt by it or not. Because if it's not really about me, then maybe I shouldn't be hurt by it. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody listening to know that the reason doesn't matter. When somebody aims an arrow at you, you can't say, oh, they did it by accident, so it doesn't hurt. Like there's Mm -hmm. an arrow in your heart you're still going to have to deal with the pain. You have the right to say, I am not okay with what happened. This hurts and I need to heal from it. Like I need to honor how I have been impacted by somebody else's actions, regardless of what the story is. Many of us, especially in relationships, we look for that person's childhood memories. We look for that person's like past relationship experiences? Why is it that they are shutting me out? Why is it is it that they are minimizing my feelings? Why is it that this or that? But we're skipping the part where we say, this minimization of my feelings hurts and I'm not okay with it. This, you know, treatment where if I'm asking for something or if I'm asking for my needs to be met, that if I'm being treated as if I'm asking for too much, instead of just truly contemplating, am I asking for too much? Like, don't skip the part where you give yourself permission to tell yourself, these are my needs, and I have the right to express them. Like, don't quickly jump to the other person's view, hoping Mm -hmm. that if you can Again, another thing I talk about in this in Trust Your Heart is don't leave your story to be in someone else's. You can see their story. You can see where they're coming from. You can see what they've gone through. But that doesn't mean that you have to leave your story and what you've gone through and what your intentions are to be in theirs. Because when you're in their story, you've left yours. Now it's all based on them, what they think, what they feel. You have the right to continue walking in your story while still seeing someone else's. I yeah. always go on big <clears throat> tangents, but that's just no, it's, I how it. I talk. But it's uh, it, it's like the idea like on planes where they tell you put your oxygen mask on first. Otherwise, you can't be of service to anybody else. Exactly. So I love that. Yes. And uh, everybody's asking what where those questions were from. It's from her new book, Trust Your Heart. Uh, your team yeah. actually sent me that link. So it's the first link in my link in bio. It's where uh, you see the, yeah, the title that's on your phone. Um, yeah, so that's what here. it looks like. Yeah. And so if you go to the script. link in my bio, um, the very first one says, read or listen to my guide, trust your heart. And uh, when you click on it, you actually get a 60 day free trial. So you could read it, listen to it and have access to all their amazing content. Um, but yeah, I wanted to read those questions because to me, even writing them myself, it was so powerful for me to take all of the questions that I would have had for another person. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, like, why did you do this? The question was, do I want to be with someone who does this? Mm. It's so powerful. Like, it's such a big shift in perspective, shift in thinking, because now you're not so focused on the reason that somebody else did something because truly what are you looking for with the reason we're always looking back to confirm what we already believe about ourselves so stop looking for the reason yeah look for whether you're okay with it look for how it impacted you look for how it hurt you look for am i okay with it or not yeah practicing putting yourself first yes I love that. Uh, I have a lot of um, uh, passages from yes. uh, Trust Your Heart that I'd love to get to. Unfortunately, this first one, I didn't write the page down, but I loved it. It said, uh, let the pain through. Let it hurt. Mm. Let it overwhelm you. It's not that you are being overly sensitive or dramatic. You are sensitive, which makes you human. You are reacting to a massive pain, which also makes you human. That heartbreak mm-hmm. hurt. It broke something inside of you. Accept mm-hmm. that break so it can heal. If you continue to walk or run with a broken leg, 
the damage will linger and is more likely to leave permanent long-term effects. Mm-hmm. And then uh, last month in our book club, we looked at the power of now, which I felt like this philosophy fits really well with it. This idea of just accepting the moment as it is, sitting with it, but not allowing mm-hmm. it to overwhelm you. Uh, overwhelm you. So I'd love yes. if you could tell me a little bit more about your perspective of how we do that and why it's so important. Yes. So this is in chapter one. I actually have it highlighted right here too, right <laughs> nice. at the top. Yeah. Um, for me, any escape from feeling the pain that's already there, that's already knocking on our door, it's a lot of times we get the wrong message that being present means not allowing anything to get to you. Um, just, you know, yes, you want to be the observer, you want to be the watcher, you want to be the one who's like, oh, it's interesting that I'm feeling this pain. Absolutely. But a big requirement of that is that you are sitting with whatever it is that's visiting you. Mm-hmm. You're not allowing it to have power over your your present moment. You are sitting with it as if it's a guest. So you're the one with power. And taking it back to the analogy of building a home within, this feeling, this pain, this hurt is visiting you. You're the one who's able to say, come on in. Let's give you some compassion. Let's give you some love. Let's hear you out. But there comes a point where I'm going to tell you it's time for you to leave. Maybe you can visit again tomorrow. But I am the one who gets to tell you, leave. And if we're putting it in practical terms, when I say, let the pain through, let it hurt, let it overwhelm you. It's not that you're being overly sensitive or dramatic. You're sensitive, which makes you human. This is a an invitation for you to treat yourself with the compassion that you would treat someone that you truly love. If somebody came to you, think of your most loved one right now, and they came to you and said, you know, this thing happened today and it really hurt me. Would you tell that loved one of yours, go away, I can't deal with this right now? Or would you say, what do you need from me? Mm -hmm. let me make you a cup of tea let's talk about it tell me what hurt that's what you're doing when I say let the pain through let it hurt is truly sit with the version of you who first experienced that pain and instead of shaming them for having gone through what they went through and it's not when I say you're shaming a past self of yours it's not always using the words I'm so ashamed of you but when you don't allow yourself presently to sit with that past self of yours and hear them out and sit with them in that pain that they're going through. You're indirectly saying, I just, I don't, I want you out. I, so that's shaming, that's exclusion. Mm -hmm. So put that, put it, put the self-compassion into action and say, I'm going to sit with that past version of mine who went through this pain and tell them all the things that I wish someone told me in that moment. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. Like somebody is breaking your heart right now and that's really painful. And I can't imagine what it feels like to be going through something like this, but just know that you didn't deserve this. Know that you were right when you asked for clarity on this. Know that. So that being present with the pain, being present with a past version of yourself who's like knocking on your door saying, hey, I'm still here. I haven't resolved these big feelings that I have. That's all part of being present. That's all part of, sorry, my phone keeps wanting to fall. (laughs) That's all part of like telling yourself, I forgive myself for my past I don't judge myself for what I went through back then. I forgive myself for doing what I know in the moment I thought was for the best, but what now I see wasn't for the best. I, I understand why past me was so desperate for love and why she accepted this and that. Like when you do that, then you're giving that past version of yours and that pain, you're giving them the resolution that, they're clearly 
seeking that they're clearly desperate for. Mm. So for me, that section that we just read is from another. So it's chapter one, but it's under um, break the dam of strength within you. Yeah. Break the dam of strength that you have within you. So I, I gave the analogy of like what we are doing when we push the pain away it's like we put a dam in its face and imagine that water that's like the pain that's, mm -hmm. you know, coming up against it. And it's creating this intensity. It's creating this resistance. And just imagine that dam falling apart and just let the pain flow through you. Mm -hmm. Let it peacefully flow through you. It's not going to sit with you forever. It just, it's looking for you to hear it and see it and validate it and, not continue to be ashamed by it and mm -hmm. really not continue to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, that, that's a great metaphor, the water one. And uh, kind of everything you just said really reminded me of something that um, Michael Singer of The Untethered Soul, uh, if you've read that one, talks about that he tried to kind of lock up his past self. He wanted to get rid of the voice in the head. And so he locked up himself. And it wasn't until years later till he had this uh, epiphany and had this visualization of going into that cage where he locked his past self and kind of giving him a hug, taking him by the hand and saying, no, we're supposed to yeah. do this together. It wasn't mm -hmm. that you're supposed to keep that part away. You're supposed to integrate it into your current self and do it together, this journey of life. And it wasn't until he did that that everything started to really change. So yes. I thought, I love that. I, uh, I, I did. Yeah, I did read his book. And I believe that wholeheartedly. I, I actually uploaded a video the other day, um, where I said I, I had a podcast interview. And the interviewer asked me, um, if little you was sitting beside you right now, what would she be thinking and feeling? And as soon as she asked me that question, because I'd never asked myself that question, I never imagined Mm -hmm. that scenario and it just it hit me that little me was looking at me admiring me the mm -hmm. way that I used to admire confident women when I would see them when I was younger and it just it brought tears to my eyes like wow I'm at a point where my little me is like it's she's in awe of who I am today that must mean that like I have her with me everywhere I go, you know, like sh I, I never thought about it that way. But for me, it's like she is with me everywhere I go. Because like, as I was answering that question, I was like, the other day, I, I went out to the mall. And I said, I'm taking little Nejwa on a date. Mm -hmm. Like, I do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And also, like, anytime I'm going through any kind of triggering moment, or like big, overwhelming feelings and decisions that I have to make or go through, I'm always aware of how little Nej was feeling in a moment like that and how it is now my responsibility to make sure that she's feeling safe, to make sure that she's feeling like she's in good hands, like she can trust me, you know? Yeah, e Edith Eager of uh, uh, The Choice, she talks about that a lot, about that actually visualize your your little you, like actually do stuff with them, not just go in there and give them a hug and whatever, but really experience them as being part of you. So that's amazing. Yes. I mm -hmm. love that. Um, in chapter four uh, of Trust Your Heart here, uh, you write about something I thought was super cool. Uh, when people ask you, how are you really? And add that mm -hmm. really at the end of the sentence, you point out that when there's a really there, you're much more likely to give an honest answer. And so mm -hmm. you then turn that around and ask the reader to ask themselves, who are you really? Yes. And again, it's something that came up in the power of now, this question of who am I if I'm not my past? I'm not my experiences. I'm not even my thoughts. So what would you say to someone whose answers to those questions is, I don't know. I don't know who I am if I'm not those things. Well, if you don't know who you are, at least that is a level of awareness that you can begin with. Yes. Like we've all gone through so many tough periods in our lives where we feel like we've lost ourselves and we've lost sight of who we are. I've gone through that some moments I still go through that because again, you fall into old patterns and you need it's the awareness. So if your answer is I don't know who I am without all of my labels, 
then you can make the decision to start the journey of self-discovery. That's actually what trust your heart is about. Because if you mm-hmm. read the stuff that's in the lo- little heart, it says lead your journey to self-discovery from within. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this whole guide is about truly figuring out who you are. So if you're at a point where you're like, I don't know who I am, that's the fir- like the perfect place to start where you can if I can prompt you right now with something to walk away with begin with writing out all the things that you've defined yourself as up to this point and then answer the question what do you wish people saw within you that's usually gonna give you it's like it's gonna open a door for you to discover who you are what do I wish people saw about me Mm -hmm. that's going those are like the parts of you that you feel hurt that people don't see about you or that you feel like maybe if they saw that they would see me differently so then maybe those are parts of you that truly define who you are and they need to be embraced by you so I would begin with that Um, also if it's okay with you for us to do just one more question because I don't have that much time but we can do another live another day too because I feel like there's so many people who joined and yes I'd love to do that Um, can I ask I have a little surprise gift for you and I know uh, it's a person Uh and she has to get back to work so I just want to she doesn't have enough um, followers to do uh, to come on live with us so I'm just going to I'm just going to call her. Um, Okay. Just give me a second. Uh, uh, I think you'll really enjoy the surprise. Okay. (laughs) And then we can do uh, one last question. Hopefully this works out. Okay. Sorry. Hey, Noelle, are you there? Hi. Yes, I am. Okay. This is our friend, Noelle. Uh, from our book club and she has something to share with you that I thought was amazing and I wanted to give her credit for it. Okay. Hi, Noelle. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. It's an honor to um, see you. Um, Thank you, Will, for allowing me this opportunity to participate in the conversation. Um, But yeah, so first I wanted to say, uh, Neshwa, I was inspired by your book. Um, When you vocalized your authenticity and your vulnerability to come forward as you're reaching out to millions of people with your healing journey, that you two identify that you're still in that process of healing. And I think that's very powerful because my purpose, I feel I want to empower others to empower themselves. And I felt like an imposter for a while because Mm. I too am still continuing on my healing journey. And like you said, we're not always um, healed fully. But um, what Will wanted me to share with you is um, I am an educator. I work at a high school and I have not only included actually some of your work in my curriculum, but I wow. um, successfully got your book inside of our school library. So Aww. it's available to our students to be able to access and check out, which is really exciting. Um, just Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah, of course. Um, shared your video, How to Build a Home Within Yourself with my students yesterday and had a prompt question for them to ask their peer how they can build a home within themselves and how they validate themselves. And it prompts a lot of great conversation and I just really appreciate your work. So thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Thank you for doing all of that. And seriously, like, I, I don't even know what to say because it just makes my heart so happy. And just, I, it makes me emotional, like to see that, my words have reached that many people and that you find there is value in your students reading my work and to the point where you put it in your curriculum like thank you so much for doing that it I'm definitely going to remember this moment forever so thank you thank you Noelle thank you so much an honor to meet you on here. Aw, same. I will get your info right after this, and I'm going to send you a message. Oh, wonderful. All right. It was really wonderful to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Noelle. Aw. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I love that.
Aww. Yeah, she's amazing. She she's put your book in there, and now these high school students, you know, for years to come, are going to have access to it. And what a better time in life to to learn these ideas. So I just love yeah. that. Um, uh, so your the last question I have uh, because uh, you know almost selfishly I, I want to get this in here. <laughs> so I regularly come uh, get people coming in here during my live streams saying yes. that they're they're heartbroken from a recent relationships. Yeah. A relationship that they can't get over it and then asking me for advice and then I usually just tell them to go read welcome home but I'd love Aww. if you could give your answer to that question for anyone out here in the audience who might be going through it and just for me to to know what your answer is in the future so I could echo that how they could get over heartbreak mm -hmm. <clears throat> so again this is why I wrote trust your heart because it's about discovering yourself through the heartbreak and discovering yourself beyond the heartbreak. So I broke this guide down into uh, talking about how you can take that relationship that broke you in some way and take it as an opportunity to learn about yourself and to learn about all the moments that your gut actually told you something's mm. wrong here there was a red flag but that you allowed your trust for them or your hope for what that could come of the relationship to override what you knew was right for yourself um so that's self-discovery through the heartbreak and then self-discovery beyond the heartbreak is the part where you're like who am, who am i without that relationship who am i without all of these labels like who am i on you know, that that level of who are you really, truthfully, who are you without your age, without your gender, without where you come from, without the languages you speak, how much money you make, how much effort you put into other people's lives? Can you come in touch with the essence of that? So for any person who comes to you and says, <laughs> how do I get over this heartbreak? I say get through the heartbreak, because getting over and I know people mean like, how do I get through this time? Mm -hmm. But give them that. Um, I, I don't want anybody to ever think they're going to get an answer that's like, oh, I'm fully healed. And now I'm it's hard work to get mm -hmm. over a heartbreak. It's hard work to get through a heartbreak. You have to sit and have an honest conversation with yourself in the mirror. What went wrong? Why am I hurting right now? Why am I judging myself so much for going through something like that? Why am I feeling hopeless about the future? Why am I feeling like I don't deserve love? Why am I feeling like, you know, there's just no way to get through this? Like sit down and have a conversation with yourself as if you're having a conversation with someone that you truly and deeply care about. Because when you do that, you're already getting through it. You're already healing. But when you're so fixated on, I want this to go away, how do I get over it? Mm -hmm. It's going to continue to control you. What you resist persists. Mm -hmm. And you, you want to be at a point where there's that flow in your life, not that resistance. So get through it by coming back to yourself, by coming back to who you are, by going back to all the moments when your body actually showed you that it knew that you were in the wrong place mm -hmm. and apologize to that past self of yours by saying, I apologize for not listening to you. I apologize for trusting someone else over trusting you and moving forward. I will trust my feelings and my thoughts and my judgments over anyone else's, especially when those two things come at odds. I know that I said I have to go and I do, but there's one thing that I want to mention is in this guide, I actually talk about gaslighting. Mm -hmm. And when I talked about gaslighting, I talked about how it really is like, it's, it's not a person's fault to go through it. But what happens when somebody gaslights you is you go through that moment of like, whose judgment do I trust? Whose recollection do I trust? Whose, and at some point, whether it's subconscious or conscious, we make a decision to trust someone else over trusting ourselves. Mm -hmm. So get to a point where you learn about all those moments when you trusting yourself 
and trusting someone else came at odds with each other. And instead of trusting yourself, you chose to trust someone else. Like going through all of that will not only help you get over a relationship, it will help you build a relationship with yourself that there is absolutely no way you could get into the same relationship you got into before because now you're a grown version of who you were in the past who's a lot more mature, who knows who they are and who will never allow another person to like write over Mm -hmm. their narrative, who will never allow another person to have more importance in their life than their own yeah that's that's what i would say (laughs) that's a great answer and just use the opportunity to to continue evolving sounds like yes i love that uh okay thank you so much for being here i'd love to do this again anytime you're free please uh let me know i have so much more i want to talk about Uh, trust your heart if you guys want to read it uh in nejwa's link in bio there's a link to it you can get access to it for 60 days the very first link first link in 60 days free. Um, so you could read her book. And then I don't know if any of your other writing is on there yet on script. But if not, there's lots of other content on there. And then Welcome Home is everywhere, uh, Amazon or your bookstore, wherever. Yes. Yes. And uh, follow her on social media, same name, I think, across all platforms. Yes. <laughs> and we will do another live on here, I promise. Beautiful. Um, we can I do love that. another time where we just answer everybody's questions. I would love to do that. And amazing. Yeah. And we do uh, as part of our book club. We do a lot of clubhouse chats. So uh, I'd mm-hmm. love if you ca- came with us one of these days and everybody could have a, a big conversation together. I think that would be lovely. Yes, I would love to. We can text about it. Awesome. Thank you again, Ezra. All thank right. you so thank much. You. Have an thank awesome, you, awesome day. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. Take care. Whew. That was amazing. Amazing. How do I turn this off here? There we go. Wow. That was uh, definitely worth the wait. That was so good. Did you guys, uh, did everybody enjoy that? Sorry, I was, you guys know me, I can't really um, interact with chat uh, when I'm trying to pay attention. What, what, one, one activity mind here, a simple mind. Uh, so I, I didn't uh, get to keep up with the chat so much, but uh, the little bits that I did see, uh, it seemed like everybody was enjoying it. You're so welcome, Noel. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you privately. That was awesome. And I'll, I'll share your information with uh, Nejra. Yeah, the new book is Trust Your Heart. It's on Scribd only. Uh, It's digital and audio version only. Um, uh, The same link is in my bio and her bio. So whichever one you use, it's uh, exactly the same. And like she said, you get 60 days free of Scribd. So that's to read her book or to listen to it if you prefer audiobook. And then everything else that that platform has to offer. So uh, I highly recommend it. I read Trust Your Heart in two sittings. I just, it was so good. Just uh, definitely a page turner. You just want to consume more and more. So it was wonderful. Definitely recommend it. And yes, I will repost this. Uh, well, I assume it's, it's uh, recorded by TikTok. Usually TikTok automatically records these and then you can download it later. I've never done it as a, um, a whatever it's called, a duo thing. So I assume it's the same. If it is, then I will uh, repost it on uh, my YouTube, which I believe is maybe linked in my link in bio. Let me just check that. If not, it's the same name everywhere. Yeah, so if you go to my link in bio, it'll bring you here so that it's the read um, Trust Your Heart for free. You can do that via the first link. Down below here is... My YouTube, I believe, yes, that leads to the YouTube. So you could find that there. And for anybody who's new here, thanks for hanging out. Um, This all came about as part of our uh, book club. Right now in our book club, we're reading Atomic Habits. Last month we read Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. Next month we'll likely be reading Untethered Soul. 
So if you want to find out more about that, just click the second link below Nejwa's link there, the Self-Healing Book Club, and you can get access for the next two weeks for a buck. And so come join us. Um, this is just the first of what I hope will be many uh, wonderful activities like this.